All right, today in geometry, we're looking at the last section of Envision's chapter three, which is 3.5 symmetry. First essential question, what are the properties of the four types of rigid motion? 3.5's essential question, how can you tell whether a figure is symmetric? After today's lesson, you should be able to identify different types of symmetry in two-dimensional figures. So first, identify trans transformations for symmetry. It says, what transformations can be used to map the figure onto itself? And why can some figures be mapped onto themselves? If I'm going to go ahead and pull down a ruler here. So if I look at this figure, okay, first off, let's talk about, let's think about the different types that, um, of things that we know about. I know reflection, so lines of reflection. So if I were to take and cut this in half, horizontally. I could flip it over that line. I didn't really draw a nice line there. So let's try that again. So if I could get my ruler to where I'm right. So if I flipped that over that line, that horizontal line, it would lay directly on top of itself. So I've got a reflection over the vertical line. Okay. So I see I could reflect over this vertical line. I also see that looks like if I were to cut it in half this way, over that horizontal line, or sorry, this was my vertical line, the other one was my horizontal line, that it would also lay on top of itself. So I could reflect over a vertical line, the horizontal line as well. Okay. Now let's talk about what else. Okay, so we've talked about reflections. We've also talked about rotations. So if I were to take this figure and rotate it, so let's talk about rotating 90 degrees. 180 degrees, 270 degrees. So if I were to take this figure and rotate it 90 degrees, okay, it's not on top of itself. 180 degrees, yes, it's exactly on top of itself. So here I could do a 180 degree rotation, or I could do a reflection over the vertical line through the center and the horizontal line through the center. Okay. So vocabulary word, a figure has symmetry, if a rigid motion can map the figure onto itself, okay? So we just figured out this has symmetry because we've got a rigid motion of rotation and a rigid motion of reflection. So now we wanna talk about another vocabulary word, which is called reflectional symmetry. So reflectional symmetry. It's symmetry for which a reflection maps the figure onto itself. The line of reflection for reflectional symmetry is called the line of symmetry. So here we have this picture, and it says the reflections R of M and R of N map the figure onto itself. Observe that lines M and N both divide the figure into two pieces with the same size and shape. So we have M as our vertical line, N as our horizontal line. All right, a figure has another vocabulary word, rotational symmetry. If its image is mapped onto the pre-image after a rotation of less than 360 degrees. So again, the same figure, the rotation, Okay. 180 degrees about point P maps the figure onto itself. So if we took and rotated this figure 180 degrees about the center point P, we would be able to lay it directly on top of itself. Okay. So I'm going to bring my ruler back down here. It says what transformations map each figure onto itself. Okay. So do I have any kind of reflections or rotations here? So first let's look at a reflection. Notice top and bottom, left and right look the same. So again, if I could cut this in half, so let's say 
get a vertical line through here. I didn't do a good job of getting that in the center. So let's try that again. It might be easier without the... Out the ruler. No, we'll try one more time. Maybe right there. Okay. So I could fold it over that. It's going to lay directly on top of itself. And then it also looks like this way I could get a horizontal through the center and fold it over itself. And I would have reflectional symmetry. So again, I've got reflectional, so reflectional, both vertical and horizontal lines. Move that through the center. Now I'm going to talk about rotational. Can I rotate this figure? If I rotate this figure 90 degrees, it's standing up. If I rotate it 180 degrees, it's right back on itself. So again, I've got 180 degree rotational symmetry here. Okay. All right, number two, the smiley face. Okay. So my smiley face, if I rotate it 90 degrees, okay, my eyes are like here, right? 180 degrees, my eyes are on the bottom. Okay. 270, my eyes are over here, 360. So I don't have any kind of rotational symmetry. And then let's look at um, reflection, okay? I cannot go horizontal because then the eyes come down where the mouth is and the mouth goes up to where the eyes is, but maybe vertical, right? So maybe I could get a vertical if I went straight through the middle, so straight, I just want to move you, directly down the middle of the face between the eyes, and I fold it over that, it would lay exactly on top of itself. So I have a reflection over the vertical line through the center. Is all that the smiley face has. Okay, so now we're going to identify lines of symmetry. How many lines of symmetry does a regular hexagon have? I want to start with looking at, so I remember that our regular, regular means all the sides are the same. So I've got these vertices, right? Remember that? If I connect, if I draw the lines from the vertex to the opposite vertex. I'm going to try to do this without the ruler. It's going to take me a long time to move that ruler each time on here and do that. So if I go from this vertex to the one opposite, that one. I go from this vertex to that one. This one to that one. Okay. Each time I do that, so each vertex, it gives me a equal half. So each line through opposite vertices creates equal halves. Okay? But then, so right now I've got one, two, three. I've got three lines going through opposite vertices, right? But then, remember we said it was a regular hexagon, which means all the sides are the same. So if I take the middle point of each, the midpoint of each side, and I draw a line through it, midpoint from the, my opposites, again, midpoint here, midpoint here, connect. I'm also going to create equal halves. So each line through the midpoints of opposite sides creates equal halves. 
So here I had another three. So how many lines of symmetry does a regular hexagon have? Three plus three, six lines of symmetry for a regular hexagon. Okay. Right, let's go to the back. How many lines of symmetry does each figure have? How do you know whether you have found them all? Okay. All right, so this one is not regular. Okay. This is a rectangular, not regular. Not all of my sides are the same. Okay. So I cannot go from vertex to vertex. Right. What can I do? I notice horizontal. Flip it over that. It's going to be the same. What about vertical? Flip it over that. Yes. So I've got two lines of symmetry here. How do I know I found them all? This is not a regular polygon. So I know that I'm not going to have from vertex to vertex. Number two, it's like I've got a trapezoid. It's not regular, right? It means not all of my sides are the same. So again, I cannot do my vertexes from opposite vertex to opposite vertex. And notice that uh, if I did a horizontal line, it's not going to be the same. So on this one, I can only do vertical line. So this one has one line of symmetry. Right. Let's identify rotational symmetry. For what angles of rotation does the figure map onto itself? An equilateral triangle, okay? So we want to find an angle of rotation, okay? So we want to find the angle of rotation about the center of the triangle that maps Triangle ABC to itself. We could pull out a protractor, right? Here's the center, and we could measure this angle here. Right? We could measure this angle here. We could pull out a protractor and do that. Or the easiest way, okay, we want to go to, onto itself. So we always take 360 degrees, full circle, okay? How many sides does a triangle have? So we do 360 divided by the number of sides. Okay. Triangle has three sides. So 360 divided by three gives me 120 degrees. Okay. So a 120 degree rotation. So if I did 120 degrees, starting from here, that's going to take point B up to A. That puts vertex B at A. But I could keep going, right? 120 plus 120. Or I could say 120 times 2 is 240. A 240 degree rotation so that's moving so this would be 120 this would be 240 puts vertex c at point a so this one has 120 degree and a 240 degree rotation okay so i take 360 degrees i divide it by how many sides i had and then I just keep going from on that multiple, so 120, then my next factor, right, um, <clears throat> until I would get past 360 is going to give me my rotation, right? All right, so now let's look at, and that's only if it is a regular. I should be very clear about that. That's only works if it's regular. This one, it worked because it was an equilateral triangle, which means all three sides of my triangle are the same, okay? So now we're going to look at a parallelogram. Parallelogram, I want to know what kind of rotation, okay? So if I rotate it 90 degrees, okay, obviously it's not going to be because then it's going to be standing upright. That's not the same. If I rotate, and again, we're talking about, about the center, 180 degrees is going to lay it completely back on itself. So here, this is a 180 degree rotation to get about the center to get back to itself. 
parallelogram that is not a regular polygon. So I cannot do my 360 divided by 4. Okay. All right. The type of symmetry for which there is a rotation of 180 degrees that maps a figure onto itself is called point symmetry. A parallelogram has 180 degree rotational symmetry, therefore it has point symmetry. So let's look at some point symmetry. Last page, what are the rotational symmetries for each figure and then does it have point symmetry? So I keep losing my page. So what are the rotational symmetries for each figure? So number one, a look at about the center. Okay. So here's the center. If I rotate it 90 degrees, okay, 90 degrees, is this going to land up there? Yes. Okay, so I've got a 90 degree rotation. If I do another 90 degrees, so 180 degrees, yes. 270 degrees back here. So I've got 180, I don't know why that is drawing this stuff. So 180 degrees, um, 270 degree. So this one has a 90 degree, 180 degree, and a 270 degree rotation. Yes, it has point symmetry because it also has the 180 degree rotation symmetry. So therefore it has point symmetry. Number two, find my center. If I do 90 degrees, it's straight up and down, so no 90 degrees. 180, yes, so I've got 180 degree rotation. Uh, 270, no, so 180 degree rotational symmetry, so therefore, yes, it also has point symmetry. The next one, determine symmetries. Oh, that's not, doesn't belong there. What type or types of symmetry does each figure have? Okay, so I notice I have a flower, okay? I've got petals, okay? So I know I'm going to have um, <clears throat> reflectional symmetry because I've got where all of these are the same, my petals are the same here. So I know I'm gonna have reflectional symmetry. So reflectional symmetry. My lines of symmetry. Okay, so again, this petal down here to cut this one in half, there's one line. This petal cuts in half, there's two lines. This petal cuts in half three lines. This petal cuts in half four lines. This petal cuts in half five lines. So I've got five lines of symmetry. Now, rotational, I can tell that if I rotate this petal, okay, on um, this flower, that the petals are going to lay on top of itself. So rotational, how do I figure out the angle about that center? Again, these are all the same, right? 360 divided by, I have five petals, so 360 divided by five gives me 72 degrees. So I need my multiples of 72. So I've got 72 degrees. If I do 72 times 2, I get 144, so 144 degrees. 72 times 3 gives me 216. 72 times 4 gets me 288 degrees. 72 times 5 puts me past 360, so these are the rotational. 72 degrees, 144 degrees, 216, and 288 rotational symmetry, along with five lines of reflectional symmetry. Right, B. Um, let's see, do I have any reflectional symmetry? So if I drew a horizontal line, that red dot comes up here, so no. Vertical line, that red dot goes over there, so no. If I went across, no. So I have no lines of symmetry. So there are no lines of symmetry here. So now I'm just looking at rotational symmetry. So how, what can I rotate this? Again, from here to here, straight line is going to get me 
180 degree rotation in order to do that. So I would have a 180 degree rotational symmetry, which is also known as point symmetry. Okay. So point symmetry. Alright, the last thing we want to look at using symmetry. A company CEO wants a new logo that looks the same for each rotation of 30 degrees and uses the three primary colors. What are some possible logo designs? Number one, consider the different elements of the design. You need to start with a polygon that has the specified rotational symmetry, one which maps onto itself at each 30 degree rotation. The colors will have to be used carefully to achieve symmetry. Okay, so consider the different elements. We need to start with a polygon that has a specified rotational symmetry. So first I need to find out how many sides the polygon has. Okay, so 360 divided by 30 degree rotational symmetry, so divided by 30, gets me 12. So I know that we're looking at a 12-sided polygon which is called a dodecagon. dodecagon. Hmm? Consider how the colors can be used so each section is the same. So here are three possible designs. So my green colors in here, each one there, right? and then along the outside edges there, you can see the greens. The other one here, again, the green is just... here, and then here it looks like, and then here the greens are on the outer edges of this. Okay. All right, that is section three points, sorry, 3.5 symmetry, the last of this in Envision. So your homework is Envision 3.5. Get that done on Envision, turned in through Canvas. Monday we will take the vocabulary test. Tuesday we will take the chapter test over all of this.